Hello everybody, hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for all the nice links, drop a like, subscribe, click the bell icon if you like the content and check out the top right eye for even more nice links. Today is a little bit of a polished video. As you guys know, we've come pretty far in this series, 178, I think episodes so obviously we're gonna need a little bit of polish uh, our game looks pretty good right now we have a huge area usually games don't have a big area like this where you see your character like you see the whole world here what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in the camera a little bit and also we're gonna fix this poking animation so that we can click continuously and it will attack like a regular game because you you shouldn't just attack when you click on an enemy you should be able to miss click and uh, miss and stuff like that so we're gonna fix that and we're gonna fix a little more stuff let's start off with this one thing with the player though so what i want to do is i want to go to the game state first of all because game state is where we have our combat so let's open up let's open our game state here let's go down to where we handle our combat here is our combat and everything we did create this in the last video we have a little set in it attack but what we need to do is we need to further divide this up we need to take this attack timer and control x this out of here and place it here with a and operator this will ensure that we can attack our attack timer will start and then we'll be able to attack and the animation will start for that attack but in here in this function we'll check if it's actually hitting the enemy so i'm going to control x this as well and i'm going to place it right after all of that so this will check if the enemy's damage timer is done and i can remove this internal if statement actually so as this is done we're gonna do one more thing so we can see our player a little more clearly we're gonna go into game state and we're gonna go all the way up to where we initialize our view and you'll see we're initializing the view with the size of the window and that's a little too large for me for my taste so i'm gonna go ahead and divide that into two here and not dot f this is an unsigned in so you want to keep it to two not floats as we run this now you'll see that the viewport is a lot bigger so we can zoom in we'll see our character a lot more and you can see i can continuously attack here but if i hold down the mouse button you're seeing it's kind of flashing like that it's not a nice animation it's not going back and forth because what we have to do is we have to go into our sword and we have to look into the animation timer we're checking the current elapsed time versus the attack timer so while it's less than this attack timer max it's gonna do all the animation it's gonna keep the weapon sprite at this position but what i want is i want that weapon sprite to come back at like half point or fourth point of this attack timer max so we can see that we're kind of charging up again so you'll understand what i mean if i divide this up like that and this is an int so we're just gonna divide it by four i think four is a great number and now if i attack an enemy you'll see that it's if i hold down the mouse button you'll see it's kind of poking and coming back and i like that that's a lot nicer as an attack animation because you can you can even hear it almost when when you poke and you kill an enemy you can almost like and another piece of polish is to slow down the player because the bigger your world is if you're like running around across the world you know the world seems very small so if you slow down your player to a good amount not too slow but not too fast right now it's too fast so that will be done in my player class where we actually create the movement component so here you'll see if you hover over this you'll see what we have we have max velocity acceleration deceleration i'm gonna put this at 100 all right that's a little too little maybe but let's put it at 100 1300 and then we'll keep Keep deceleration as what it is now maybe we're a little too slow let's increase that to 140 maybe and 1400 and this feels a lot better it's not too slow it's not too fast an additional issue that occurred from this is i don't know if you saw it but the area of which the light was shining was very very small because we zoomed in and the shader works in a different way it's, it's kind of touching all the pixels depending on the screen size so when we zoom in that portion which, which is being lit up is way smaller than what it was before when we were zoomed out so if we go to our fragment shader the frag we'll see a a lot of stuff maybe that we have forgotten but there is one point here length of the vector distance this is the point where we can multiply with two so you'll see our light area is a lot bigger and it looks a lot nicer i'd say next thing i want to touch up and polish is our text tag system because it's it's kind of very very simple it, it doesn't really animate it doesn't really do anything so i want to do this in in the coming videos what i want to do is i want to add a functionality for this to accelerate so we're just going to add a test thing here acceleration we're gonna add that we'll initialize acceleration so this acceleration will be in the text tag itself not the system you know think of think of that so it will be in the text tag so we'll just be changing stuff in here let's go ahead in here and let's see when we create a text tag we have a speed but i also want to add a acceleration now float acceleration like that here we got to change a few things acceleration equals tag 
acceleration and that is all good and nice and here's the main change so while our lifetime is greater than zero that means the tag is alive so to speak we're gonna be decreasing that like this now what we're doing right now is we're straight up just moving it we're not accelerating or anything but what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little velocity here as well or sf vector 2f velocity and this will be just like in our player movement component where we'll be able to move this text tag in a much smoother fashion. So accelerate if this acceleration is greater than let's say zero. So if we put it to zero, then we won't accelerate. Then we'll do a little else statement here. Probably a better way to do this, but I'm gonna just do it like this right now. So otherwise we're just gonna straight up move it like this. So here we're gonna do this velocity.x multiplied by dt. Uh, we can just do this velocity multiplied by dt in here. But here is the magic. So we're going to be changing our velocity, right? This velocity.x plus equals this acceleration multiplied by dt. And then the same thing for y. But we missed one thing. We missed the direction. So we do have a direction that this is going to move. So this dear x multiplied by and then this dear y multiplied by. Now we need to limit it to the speed maximum. So our speed is going to be the maximum speed that we can get up to. And to limit it, it's it's pretty, pretty simple. If abs this velocity dot x is greater than this speed this velocity dot x equals this dear x multiplied by this speed so the same thing for y make sure to put y in all of these so you don't mess it up and then we'll have a nice move function right here and this depends on if we actually add an acceleration or not now before we start fixing stuff in the cpp file i want to add one more thing i want to add even another one here so what i'm going to add is int fade value now our fade value is going to be something that's that we're going to remove and deduct from our alpha channel in the color each step so this is going to make it fade out slowly but if it, of course, if it's zero, then we're not going to do anything. So I'm going to add it here to fade value. And I'll do that right at the end Int fade value like that. And of course, we need to set these as well. This acceleration equals acceleration. This fade value equals fade value. Good. And we need to set that in here as well. And this fade value equals tag fade value now everything is done for the header file now all we have to do is fix all of the red stuff here so we're creating a bunch of default tags and we have to decide now how we want this to work i want my all of my tags to pretty much have the same type of thing we'll see how we'll, we'll handle this but let's just start off with the experience tag so let's give it some random values we'll see so acceleration of maybe 500.f and then we'll have a fade value of two and the same thing for this 500.f and then 2 and then 500.f and 2 nice and we haven't implemented that yet but we'll do it in a second the fade value thing it will still show as red but don't worry you you'll be able to run this so don't worry about it uh let's go ahead into the header file again let's go to our text tag at the bottom and here we're gonna switch it up a little bit if fade value so if we even assign a fade value if it's greater than zero we can check that then we're going to negate our color from that so this text dot get fill color don't do get color that's deprecated or we'll do set fill color here now we're going to do this text dot get fill color dot r and all the channels r g b and a but we also need one more thing sf color in here so i know this might get a little confusing but do it like that and it shouldn't be too confusing like that just remove the last comma and you're good to go now we're pretty much just setting the color to whatever it was before but i want to change the alpha channel so i'm gonna do minus fade value so what's gonna happen is we're gonna get the color oh you don't need that we're gonna get the color and then we're gonna get whatever the colors alpha channels right now and negate it with fade value and that will set the new color and we'll keep doing this until it's totally faded away. Now we can test both of our things. So you'll see it's fading away, but it's coming back. It's coming back. We're going to fix that. So the reason it's coming back is because this is an unsigned. So when an unsigned goes below negative, below zero, it's going to come back to whatever max max integer you can get. So we don't want that. We want it to stop at zero. So we're only going to do this. We're going to make a smart thing here and text.get fill color dot a is greater than this fade value that's the only time we're going to make it minus you can even do greater or equal to because then it will set it to zero once that's done you can go ahead and run it again and you'll see that it's fading properly 
So it's fading properly, it's going away, it's not coming back. Now you can change and play around with these fade values. I'm probably gonna do that. I'm gonna make my text a little smaller as well. They're a little too big. So if you wanna do that, just as a reminder to you guys, you can go here, hover over here, you'll see where the text size is. So that is the character size right there after the color. So you just go find the color and here's your character size. Let's just decrease that with 10 on each of these since we zoomed in so much. And let's increase the fade value to maybe three and try that out. That is nice, it fades kind of quickly. It looks pretty cool. So you see that fades pretty quickly. Now two was good for me, two was good. I'm gonna keep two, two is fine. Whatever you guys like, you can do. We're gonna do more on this in the next one. We're gonna actually add uh, a way for this to be accelerating the other way. So it's gonna start fast and it's gonna stop slowly. So it's gonna decelerate instead. That's also a cool effect on a text tag. But thank you so much for watching this video. I've been a little sick, my throat's not feeling 100%. So I apologize for the weird voice, but hopefully you learned something. It was fun to do and we have a more polished game now. And we'll keep working on the fun stuff so take care guys keep working hard drop a like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye